Well, indeed, good afternoon. Welcome. This is KTN Business Today. My name is Peter Kabon. This the last trading day of the week, 18th May, the year uh, 2018. From us here on our Mombasa Road well, studios, it is good afternoon and welcome to the show. We, of course, will be bringing up to speed on the streets that are making business headlines, not just here in Kenya, but right across the region. Today, of course, being Friday, the second part on this show, the last 30 minutes, will be the trading bell show that comes to you from the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Looking at the stories that have made headlines at the bars over the week, and that discussion with a senior Kenyan in the economic perspective is still ahead. So you don't want to miss that. Also here on this show, uh, the fact that we'll be taking a backward look at the week, the events of the week, the headlines, and with us in studio to speak into that conversation later on, Ken Geshinga, Chief Economist and Executive Director at Mentoria Consulting. He is an expert in matters business and will be lending us his expertise on what exactly has happened in the week and what we can expect going forward uh, the week ahead. Of course, as usual, we want to start off with a quick look at the numbers from the currency and, well, securities markets. Of course, we look at the various currency pairs there. The dollar pegged at 142, 132 buying and selling levels respectively, while the pound sterling is pegged at 135.60, 135.40 buying and selling levels. The euro, 118.49, 118.36 buying and selling levels respectively. Well, what have been the numbers from the NSE that have been driving this performance? Turnover for the day, last trading session, 518 million shillings worth of shares bought and sold. Shares traded some 14.7 million uh, shares moving there. The NSE 20 share index pegged at some 3,533.07 points. A bond traded, this is bond turnover, 1.3 billion shillings worth. Well, what have been the most active stocks of that trading session? These are the counters that are driving trade. Safaricom, Equity Bank, KCB, and Arthur River Mining. Safaricom moving 6.3 million, uh, 37 million shares. Equity Bank, 2.73 million. KCB, 2.13 million. And Arthur River Mining, they are moving 1.89 million over that trading session. Well, winning stocks of the day, these of course are the Bears, Transcentury, Crown Berger, East Africa, Portland Cement, and the Unger Group. Now, Transcentury, bullish, upwards 9.25% to 4 shillings 60 cents. Crown Berger, 9.38% up on the day to 87.50. East Africa, Portland Cement trending upwards 9.09% to 24 shillings flat. And Unger Group up 3.14% in that session to 41 shillings flat. Now, losing stocks of that trading session, again, at River Mining having seemed to start trending downwards. Now, Scan Group, Total, and Centum Investments. At River Mining shedding 9.90% on the day. Scan Group down 4.76% to 17 shillings flat. Total down 4.32% to 33.25. Centum Investments down 3.29% to 36 shillings and 75 cents. Well, those are the market numbers. What have been the stories that are driving this movement in the Boas? We start off in agriculture where rice farmers in Kisumu under the Hero Irrigation Scheme are staring at huge losses that could run into the millions of shillings if there is no intervention against the devastating quail air and river birds that have descended on the area in droves. The birds attack the crop just before, uh, just before harvest and could in some instances lead to total loss of the crop. Kevin Oguto with that story. 360 acres. That is the area of land under rice right now in this area of Ahero. And with it lies hundreds of households that depend on the produce that should come out of these fields. From the plush green to the browning paddy rice, it is a sight to behold, beautiful. But the stories told by the farmers here are far from good. The quilea and river birds 
known for having a voracious appetite for grains and for being destructive, have arrived here in droves, making scaring them away a full-time job for farmers here in Kano. And for the farmers like Clarkson Abiero, the loss occasioned by this invasion cannot be understated. As at now, we have rice in various stages. We have 360 at the level, at, at this level, where they are about to mature. But we have others that are ongoing. Transplanting is going on, so it is a cycle. Farmers say in previous years, the invasion has never been this bad, and that at times government in the past sprayed chemicals that will get rid of the birds. If the spraying is not done, the 360 acres will go to waste. And the subsequent ones that are following will also suffer the same fate. And as desperate times call for desperate measures, farmers have resorted to basic and crude materials on hand to scare the birds. Ndege anakula mchele kila siku kutoka asubuhi mpaka sipaka jioni saa moja ndio sija toka hapa. But for farmers who cannot do it by themselves like Amos, they have to pay for this at the rate of 10,000 shillings per acre in a month. But the losses, according to Jacob Bongere, the production funds manager, goes beyond the farms. Currently we have over 100 tons of paddy dry in the drying floor, but cannot be sold because uh, according to the buyers, they are treating them as second uh, quality or third grade uh, paddy. Because of the invasion, Many farmers have rushed to harvest their rice, creating a glut in the market. And because of this, the price of rice has gone down from 45 shillings per kilo to 30 shillings per kilo. But that is not all. And even the buyers have even had that quality of paddy in air has gone down. And so they are now turning their face against us. The fund has lent out 15 million shillings to farmers this planting season alone. Funds they are not sure will be recoverable. <laughs> and as not all the rice in the area was ready, Many farmers have now resorted to premature harvesting in a bid to beat the birds and salvage the little they can. But this further lowers the quality of rice. When we must deal with it. We must consult. We must find the right people to deal with it. Uh, spraying now would not help because they are already there. This is a situation that has moved from bad to worse over the years. And as the farmers here wait for the long-term solution from the county government, some of these farmers have already given up and they've left their farms to the birds so they can eat as much as they can. Kevin Ogutu, KTA News, Kisumu. Indeed, a problem that needs well, heads to come together to find a lasting solution. And of course, looking across the world at what other economies do in the same situation. Now, Kenya is expected to adopt a new system which will help curb the uh, proliferation of substandard goods, including foodstuff. Now, the new system by a British company and unveiled in conjunction with the British High Commission is said to be secure and replaces conventional document sales with cheap embedded ones that are electronically verifiable. Now, manufacturers hope that this will end certificate forgery document tampering, content alteration, and signature falsification. Take a look. So what this document does is to embed a microchip into documents. So this, doc this microchip gives you a smart document and, and with your smartphone you could tap on, on, on these microchips and it brings uh, you the uh, information on the document. Uh, we've kind of brought the same idea and put it into uh, uh, pro brand, brand protection. So there's a lot of issues around counterfeiting. These fraudsters would replicate the look of a product packaging and through that they deceive the end users. But what we have done is the same chip we use in our document security, we've embedded it in, in product package. And we've even done more because this chip can also detect tampering. Because what you would notice is uh, for most times you could have a new packaging being kind of like, for example, you could buy a product and someone picks it up and fills it up with a fake thing. So what we've done is that a microchip can detect tampering and it cannot be copied. So when a consumer picks a product, he could tap on the phone and can detect if that product has been tampered or if it's genuine. Uh, our solution is highly secure. Uh, what I mean by highly secure is that it cannot be cloned. Um, we've been able to achieve this because we've been able to achieve the anti-cloning technology because our chip, for each time you want to verify, generates uh, a kind of a new, kind of like a new password. That's what I would call it. So because it changes every time this, you don't have what you want to copy, you understand? So it's highly secured and offers seamless verification. On the simple tap of your phone, you can confirm if your product is genuine. No stress. 
Well, indeed, a good development right there for business and consumers. Now, middlemen and traders who visit the Marral livestock market to buy livestock and sell them at a profit in other markets in different towns have complained of losses after livestock farmers hiked the prices of goats and other livestock in Samburu County. The rise is due to sufficient rainfall in the area that is reducing pressure on the farmers to sell. In December, the price of livestock was cheap as goats, cattle and sheep glutted the market. As residents looked for money to take their children back to school and buy food for their families, the situation has changed in February when the county began experiencing rainfall. The number of livestock has been reducing in the market, forcing new farmers who bought their animals to market for sale to take advantage and increase prices. Mbusi imepanda juu sana. Tangu mbua menyesha, watu wanauza vehikali. Sasa tumeshinda hata kununua. Tukeenda hata kuna kitu tunapata. Sasa tunaimisa hata serikali yetu ya tusaidie. Hata tupate masoko zingine. Mbae naesa kutusaidia kutoka inje. Ili tupate mapato. Mana tuwe ni faida. Semo ukweli kabisa. Tulikuwa tunaitaji hata serikali ya fundishi ya wasamburu. Hapate kuwasha hile ngombe mingi. Sabu yu ngombe natuletea asara, watoto asomi, na atupati faeda kwa yu ngombe mingi. Well, the message of course has started to go in there that the fewer the cows, the better the health and the better the prices. Now, just as the county government of Nairobi and the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure look to implement the widely talked about bus rapid transport system or BRT, the world and specifically Kenya neighbors rank highly in the implementation of the system. The government is still looking to introduce about 30 new buses in the coming weeks, but fears that the system is not being properly implemented continue to grow. The country continues to debate and grapple, but as research by the Institute for Transportation and Development Policy, ITDP, shows Nairobi serves zero kilometers of rapid transit per million of urban residents in the rapid transit ratio charts. Now, cities like London, Mexico City, Bogota, Cairo, and Dar es Salaam, and Lagos are ranked at 55, 33, 14, 4, and 3 million residents, respectively. Rapid transit, uh, building, more, supplementing that with complete streets, so streets that are well connected to this transit system with, uh, with, good walking and, with good walking and cycling infrastructure that are safe, and then supporting that with new high capacity buses for the city, uh, where Nairobi stands respect to other cities in the world. We see cities like Paris where there's very high RTR, so most of the people actually have access to transit and it makes the city much more accessible. Uh, Nairobi, we are still lagging behind, so we really need to get going with, uh, with our plans for, for, for BRT so that we can also catch up with some of the cities that are already making some progressive movements such as uh, Da, which is at four, and, and, and Lagos, which is at three. Well, now to Tanzania, which is home to many different types of wildlife and many natural wonders. Now, in fact, not many people know that the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania is the inspiration for the Lion King movie. Our Swahili reporter from Tanzania, Rajab Hassan, takes a closer look at the country's tourism offering. The following story is from Tanzania and is in Swahili. Fukwe za mchanga mweupe na vivutio vingine vya kitali vya kusisimua. Bado havitoshi kueleza kwa nini Tanzania taifa la Afrika Mashariki hupokea zaidi ya watalii milioni moja kwa mwaka. Ndani ya jiko hili la chuo cha utalii na ukarimu Tanzania tumeambiwa ndipo ilipo siri nyingine. Ukarimu na mapisha vya kula vitamu huwavutia sana wageni. Tunapokuwa na mtalii tunasema kwamba a home away from home. Kwa hiyo anapokuja asijisikie kwamba hayuko nyumbani kwake ajisikie yuko nyumbani kwake kwa hiyo kwa kula chakula cha asili atajisikia amani katika moyo wake na bila kupungukiwa na kitu chochote akajisikia kama yuko nyumbani au zaidi ya nyumbani hapa hupikwa vyakula vya mataifa makubwa karibia yote duniani wataalamu katika jiko hili wanathibitisha kwamba huwezi kutenganisha chakula na utalii pia fani mbalimbali za utalii na ukarimu hutolewa katika chuo hiki cha serikali ifahamike tu Sekta utalii ni mwajiri wa vijana wengi wa taifa hili. Ni dhahiri kuwa sekta hii ina mchango mkubwa katika utoaji wa ajira hasa kwa vijana hapa nchini. 
wadau hawa ni waajiri kutoka hoteli mbalimbali mbali, na kampuni za kitalii nchini lakini pia kuna wakuu wa taasisi na wakuu wa vyombo mbalimbali taarifa ya shirika la utalii duniani WTO mwaka 2009 zililihirisha ukuaji wa ajira kupitia utalii ulikuwa kwa asilimia saba nukta moja kwa mwaka na ifikapo mwaka 2019 Inatarajiwa ajira katika utalii itaongezeka kwa asilimia saba nukta tatu. Rajabu Hassan, KT News, Dar es Salaam.